You're watching Let the Quran Speak, and we're answering your questions. You can ask a question at QuranSpeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question we have here is, why does Islam and Zoroastrianism seem so similar? If Islam is influenced by Zoroastrianism, does this mean Islam is not the truth? So is Islam uh, copying from Zoroastrianism is a question. Yeah. No, it wouldn't mean that Islam is not the truth. So, so let's start with the basics. Muslims believe that uh, the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Quran is the basis of the Islamic religion, as uh, elucidated in the life and teachings of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, so this to us is a revelation from the Almighty God. Now, if, if one uh, says, let's look at it from a historical point of view and not think about God being in the picture. As historians study almost everything, they're, they're not going to start with anything supernatural, like an angel coming and speaking to a human being, giving him a revelation from God or anything like this. They wouldn't even start with the assumption that God exists. They would just deal with material facts. They want to look at artifacts. They want to look at uh, names, places, dates, uh, what happened, when, to whom, uh, from a physical, naturalistic point of view. So. When we speak of the angel coming to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, giving him a revelation, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, reciting that revelation to his uh, listeners, they would start with the Prophet reciting the revelation to the listeners. Mm -hmm. So this background about it coming from God and so on, historians have no concern with. Mm -hmm. Now, when they uh, start with this as their starting point, they're going to ask as well, okay, what's the background of this? What's, what's the natural background of this? And they know that nothing comes out of uh, just thin air. It, uh, it has some kind of background, some prehistory. So if somebody writes a book, there, there might have been a smaller book before that, and, and the larger book just developed out of the smaller one, mm -hmm. like somebody expanded a smaller book. So what was the smaller book? If somebody is preaching a message, there must have been a message similar to that out of which this one evolved. Mm. And so what was the message similar to that? So then they are looking for uh, prior history. They're looking for similarities. They're trying to show parallels and patterns and uh, development and evolution throughout history over time. And they analyze not only Islam in this way, but also Judaism and Christianity and the host of uh, the world's religions. Mm -hmm. uh, almost uh, no, no religion is going to escape this kind of analysis. Uh, so it's it's not bad. It's uh, I mean, we should have that type of analysis, even as Muslim believers, because on the one hand, we believe that God is doing things. But uh, the other face of that is that things are happening through natural causes. And, and we still say God does it. So God sends the rain. But how does he send the rain? The, the wind blows and gathers the, the moisture into clouds. And you know, clouds become heavy and the rain falls. I, even the Quran gives us this description of how rain falls. But in a simple statement, the Quran can say that God sends the rain, uh, but that doesn't mean there's no process. So when God revealed the Quran as a revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it doesn't mean that there is no process involved. Uh, there could be some natural and physical processes as well, and, and we're not uh, to necessarily deny that out of hand. So when historians try to trace that, we can follow their lead and, and work with them and say, okay, this is what you found so far, but don't forget the divine element. The, the God uh, is guiding the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, to preach what he preaches. And that's the ultimate and simple fact that we believe in, that God guides the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But if you look at it from the historical critical point of view, uh, you will find that uh, by Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, uh, these three Abrahamic uh, faiths uh, um, owe something to Zoroastrianism. Mm -hmm. uh, we see in Zoroastrianism uh, some aspects which are in these uh, faiths uh, very prominently. We see uh, monotheism. We see uh, even though in Zoroastrianism there is a dualistic type of uh, understanding where uh, Ahura Mazda is the good god and then you have uh, you know, the evil comes from another source. Uh, whereas in, in the Bible, it says that God says in the book of Isaiah, I am Yahweh, I create evil. So mm -hmm. evil too is attributed to the one divine good God uh, because all things go back to him. He's the one source, uh, the ultimate creator, uh, the monotheistic God. Nonetheless, in, in uh, Zoroastrianism can be categorized as a sort of monotheism. Uh, and we find that in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, there's a messianism, there is a uh, belief in free will, and there is a belief in accountability in the life uh, hereafter. So uh, these are um, important components of the religion of Islam. Mm -hmm. But now... Uh, then some it, of the stories are similar, right? And, and some of the worship 
the practices, the rituals of Islam are similar to Zoroastrianism. Yes. Another dimension of this, Safiya, is that a Muslim would say that when God revealed the revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, this is not the first time that God is sending messages to human beings and guidance to human beings. So uh, much of what is there in Islam is similar to what is there in Christianity and Judaism because God revealed uh, similar messages to previous prophets, including Moses and Jesus. Uh, but it doesn't stop there because God, according to the Quran, has sent messages to people all throughout time in many different peoples, speaking many different languages. So it is very possible that God revealed something to Zoroaster uh, that uh, survived in the Zoroastrian religion. And uh, so as much as we would celebrate the similarities between Islam and Judaism and Christianity, we wouldn't see that similarity as indicating that somehow Islam uh, is not from God. We would say that uh, it, it's similar because these elements are from God. Mm -hmm. And in a similar way, we would include Zoroastrianism in that wider picture as uh, Brian Arthur Brown has done in his book entitled The Three Testaments, uh, in which he has linked Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all back to Zoroastrianism. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, for us, this link only indicates that uh, the elements which are so common in these great faiths are elements which were oh, revealed by God to his prophets throughout history and uh, that survived in the various religions. Mm -hmm. So as a Muslim, would you believe that all religions come from God then? Well, we would have that openness without knowing the details of the religion. In principle, we would say that God has sent messengers to various people, mm -hmm. and uh, those messages uh, would have survived to a greater or lesser extent. Uh, but for us, the ultimate uh, survival is in the Quran. This is uh, not only the last will and testament of God, but this is the one that God undertook to preserve himself so that uh, when we read the Quran today, we can be assured that we have here the message intact from God. Thank you, Dr. You're Chibri. welcome. There are people out there who don't interact with Muslims at all in their day-to-day -day lives. They learn everything they know about Muslims from TV or social media. Our Muslim Media Hub will reach these people and transform their lives. Support us at QuranSpeaks.com.